Hey, Dave O'Callaghan with Hit Games Motorworks. Today, we're going to do a teardown on a 2,000 horsepower 2JZ race head. This 2JZ GE cylinder head got the Head Games CNC port, and this was one of the first ones we did. I was very, very happy with it. Probably wondering why somebody would use a GE cylinder head for a race car. And that's because, well, there's a few reasons, but one of them I will tell you is the price of the head is really low. So the price to get into it, you don't have to spend a lot of money. And these heads with the head game CNC port actually perform just as good as the GTE heads. And the other thing is, if you'll notice how the exhaust ports are round, which makes it one of my favorite heads, but they're also spaced. You see how they're spaced out compared to a GTE head where the ports are almost Siamese. These are really spaced far apart. So when you're building a race car and you're making a header, this combination really makes it a lot easier to fabricate. Now, if you want to dive deep into the GE versus GTE head, we did, uh, I think a couple years ago, we did a whole video on dissecting the two heads or three heads and what all the differences are. You can check that out in our 2JZ playlist. So this particular cylinder head uh, went, a, I guess, a couple races. He raced at World Cup and he raced at uh, another event. He's done a lot of testing with it. And unfortunately at World Cup, he put a rod through the side of the block and the cylinder head obviously was going to take some damage. And we needed to dissect and figure out if the head's salvageable or not and what we can do to fix it. So Let's dive in. Valve job looks pretty decent. A little beat up here. I think we're gonna see some valve float because it it does appear, it looks okay, I guess is what I wanna say, because I can see that there's some transfer here of metal and that's usually an indication if you see like there's shadows and stuff that there is some valve float. Now the valve is not really contacting it squarely. Uh, on the intake and the exhaust, then you'll notice that there's some discoloration between the two cylinders or, you know, the two halves. And that's, that's very, very normal. But the combustion chamber um, looks great. All I mean, it's been spray washed, but an ultrasonic. But this thing looks really, really good. Like, I don't really see much going on except for this cylinder here. You'll see the valve seat on the corner here. Looks like it's getting a little hurt, like it's burning up a little bit. I don't know if this is the cylinder that got hit. But if you'll notice that none of these actually look like they have any kind of damage to it from a rod coming through. And I think a part of that is because we put good valves in it and valves are not gonna break and then you don't have catastrophic failures. You also notice that there is no water jackets and there's no water jackets because the car goes over 200 miles per hour in a quarter of a mile. And the last thing you wanna do is drive over your water uh, when you're going 200 miles an hour, that, that that ends up in a bad time. Oh, look at that! That's the um, that's the clearancing that the uh, that internet mechanic was saying that was so terrible. Oh, but it's uh, it's here and it's worked. Um, so yeah, we used to do it with the end mill, and that's what you see here. Uh, before we bought a CNC, uh, we had to make the clearance. So all right. So what I noticed is on the bottom here, it looks like there's some pulling. And on the top here too, and in the middle, it has this like really weird texture. Um, and this is pretty prevalent in all of the buckets, the bucket holes. So I suspect there's some oil starvation going on here. And that could be attributed to what happened with the engine. Um, but let's uh, dive a little bit more. Let's take a look at the cam drindles. Cam drindles look freaking amazing. Look at these things. For an oil starvation, for something that was going through an issue, I say that these things look freaking beautiful. Um, I am really, really impressed that the cam journals all look really, really good. You can't tell anything was beat up, although the bucket holes, not so much, but I didn't see any issues here where we couldn't just polish the bucket hole up, maybe get rid of some of that metal, but I don't see any problems. But I think that 
part of the reason why we see what we are seeing is because of these. Now this right here is for oil to return back to the block. Now on the later cylinder heads from the 2JZs, they don't have these. So only the earlier cylinder heads had them. And basically the, the oil would have to come up here in order for it to go down. So that it has a ton of oil in the cylinder head. Now, we're probably gonna remove these because we want more oil to go back to the block faster, but I think that's actually what saved this one. Cam caps also look awesome. For an oil starvation issue, which is the only way to explain any of that stuff, is, um, you know, it looks like some trash didn't get through at least this part of the cylinder head and it it somewhat saved the camshafts, but we're, we're gonna get to that. So we look at this and I see polishing and then these things are good to go. We're gonna inspect the exhaust valves first because I wanna show you guys some stuff here. Now these are the GSC six and a half millimeter valve stem valves that we put in all the race cars. Uh, it, it goes to six millimeter on the top so that we can run a regular 2JZ lock and it has six millimeter stem that is for strength. They're only available in one millimeter over. And uh, that's because you gotta be making some jam to be using these things. And what I noticed was that there's definitely some float going on, lots of float. So a lot of these cars, you're gonna see stuff like this just because it's gonna be popping and banging when they put on the two-step. And some ECUs are much harder on parts than others. As I showed you with Frank's head, Frank's head is on the MoTeC and everything looked good. Um, and this head, it looks like there's some, there's some damage to that, but I also noticed that like this one is good. You see like there's no heat going up it. But this one, you'll notice that it gets purples and blues. Oh, let, me, let me put these two together so you can compare them. You see the color difference. Is pretty drastic. So you can tell that some cylinders were not running the same as others. Now, I don't know which cylinder got hurt when the, the rod came through, but um, you can definitely see that there was some heat going up in a couple of these valves and it actually bent, like it bent this valve. Um, and you can see like there's purples and blues up here and it go and all the way up here. And now I just refaced this one just like a little bit so you can see how, you see how it gets dark here and this is where it was bent. So it just tweaked a little bit, um, not a lot of it. We can actually probably straighten that deal out just refacing it, but. And there's, um, that's all she wrote for these. These look pretty good. I think it needs a couple exhaust valves. Let's take a look at the intake. The intake valves really, really show some float so they're they're getting beat up again this thing makes 2000 horsepower it has 150 pounds of spring on the seat and they're around 300 open it has a lot of spring pressure and it also has uh i i, I mean it's definitely been popping and banging and but the valve stem looks really really good i cannot complain you can tell that you know the guides were perfect everything else is really running perfect um, on the tip of the valve, some of these you can see that the bucket was hitting up here. Uh, so it puts like an indentation and that's from the float. So when that happens is the, the valve is basically going up and down, up and down and, and it bounces and then the bucket's also out of time and it's going to beat into the, into the top of the valve. The cam's going to beat the bucket. Uh, it's really just a bad time. All right, now we have the valve springs. Valve springs look absolutely perfect. This is the 5086 spring from GSC. It is a conical spring, 150 pounds on the seat, 300 pounds open. This valve spring kit is actually the highest pressure, the highest rate valve spring that you can purchase currently for the 2JZ. And uh, we put it in all of our race programs and what I'm looking at here is perfection. Now, it doesn't have so many miles on it, but it has definitely many hits on it, and you have valve float and all that, but you can tell it's very well taken care of. We don't have issues with rust 
Um, he does run methanol and there is no problems anywhere here. And we, we're just gonna check the springs, make sure that they're all good. We check all of the springs. You don't just check one and make sure that they haven't lost any pressure and it's gonna go back in. Now this is the one piece that probably made the most power for this cylinder head. And that is the distributor cover that Jeff Morgano made us back in 2008 for the 2JZ. Uh, this is Jeff Morgano owned cylinder support systems. And I don't think it was that back then, but he made me these and then um, the economy crashed and I couldn't pay any of my bills. And he ended up just, uh, he gave me a bunch of them. I, I thought that was very nice of him, but we, um, this is how you make power. Let's talk buckets. We were talking about valve float. We talked about oil starvation. What are the buckets going to look like? And it has GSC R2M cams, R for methanol. You can see that they do have some marks. The circle is because these buckets are meant to turn when they're in the cylinder head, they turn. And if they don't turn, it's a problem. It's a really bad time. So we just hit this one with, see, I just hit this one with uh, some Scotch Bright and you can tell that there's a little difference. Um, there is nothing wrong with these. We did have some damaged ones. Check this out. Now, I surmise that this one and this one stopped turning. And I say that because you notice that there's no more circles in it. There's no more circles. Now, there is just basically metal coming off of it. This is sharp here, this is sharp, and it's sharp because the, all of what was happening here was getting pounded and then it stopped. And it wasn't gonna eat through because there was the float. It was gonna eat through because there was no oil anymore. And this absolutely needs oil. And this is actually a perfect example of a situation where a DLC code bucket would likely survive better in this in this scenario because the DLC has made it if you don't have any lubrication it is the lubrication it's meant to survive in these situations and if you it, I should say it's meant to survive longer and it's not just gonna like magically absolutely survive at any condition but this is a condition where it would have helped to have it I don't think you would have had a hurt bucket um, you would just, well, you might still have a hurt bucket, but it wouldn't be as hurt. And you would likely still have to replace it because even though it's DLC coded, it still is going to, it's not gonna mask the problem. It's only gonna help it survive longer. All right, R2M cams. What do we got? We got, it looks like the lash was perfect. You can see the valve float right here. So if you notice, if you notice this on your camshafts, um, this is valve float. So it's on the acceleration side of the camshaft and it's because they're at the time. And I, you can also see here, um, now this coating does come off. It's not like meant to always be there. And that's why they actually, they started shining them up because people get nervous. But you notice that the cam drills look pretty good, just like we saw on the cylinder head. And by do see, a couple of these look really, really kind of hurt from the scuffing on the bucket, like this one right here. You see how it comes all the way down. It was, this was hurt. Now, we know lash was tightening up because of the valves, because we can see it, but I don't see it on the camshaft. Usually if a lash is real tight, what we'll do is, because lash is going against the base circle of the cam, it's going on the bottom part of the heel here, and I don't see anything. I don't see anything on any of these that tells me that lash was tight, but I do see a little bit of junk, but nothing, nothing crazy. And I don't see really anything really, really wrong, except for like this, look at this lobe, this lobe, this lobe really got hurt. The light on these camshafts, it's really hard to video these things, but there's some scuffing like right here. You might even be able to hear it. There's scuffing right there that is from metal to metal transfer. And that is from the bucket coming apart. And we are gonna actually send these 
out to GSC to get them polished again, but I don't see any problems, like major problems. I don't see that we're going to have to replace them. I think that these really just need like a good polish. All right, so now we have a game plan. We are going to just polish this thing up, polish the cam journals. We're going to check the springs, reface the valves, replace some buckets, valve job at mill, assemble, and this thing's ready for low six second hits. And that's going to do it for us today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles. Hit games!